Now that we've covered both grep and regular expressions, you have some idea of the power of Unix filters. In this section, we're going to cover three additional powerful Unix filters. One filter said is able to edit lines in a stream. A similar filter named awk is able to format lines in a stream. The sort filter sorts lines in a stream. Let's start with the said command. The said command edits lines in a stream. And that's what said stands for, stream editor. The grep command can locate lines, but can't change them. The said command is like grep with the additional feature that it can edit the lines that it finds. Set is like any other editor that has been written in that there are two steps required for it to operate properly. First, you have to find the line you want to edit. In an interactive editor, you do this by punching keys on the keyboard and moving the cursor to the line you want to edit. Because said works in a stream, you have to identify the line either with line numbers or using a regular expression pattern. Once you've located the line to edit, you then have to perform some editing on the line. Set has a series of instructions that you can use to edit lines that you found in a file. This graphic shows a prototype of a said command. Said's first argument is used to identify what editing command you want to do on which lines. Note the single quotes because there's all kinds of funny characters that the shell might misconstrue. As a result, we put single quotes around it to make sure that the entire first argument as we enter it is sent off to said. And because set is a filter, you can either list file names on the command line or read the standard input. You can omit the address in a said command, in which case said performs the editing instruction on every line in the file. In essence, a global editing command. Let's take a look at the addresses first. Sed understands two kinds of addresses. First, you can have a numeric address. This shows an address that goes from lines to through the end of the file. The comma between the two values is the word through. The dollar sign is another way of saying the last line in the file. This address would search lines 3 through 10. A second kind of address that you can have on a set instruction is a regular expression. In order to separate addresses from the instruction, regular expressions have to be offset in forward slashes. For example, here's how you would look for all lines that start with a capital S. The instruction would follow this address. Even though set offers several editing instructions, I've only found two of them useful. The substitute instruction and the delete line instruction. Let's cover the substitute instruction first. The substitute instruction takes two parts. The first is the text you wish to change, and the second is what changes you wish to make. Here's what the instruction would look like. The S identifies it as the substitution instruction. The forward slash is used to mark where the text to change begins. The middle forward slash is used to mark where the text to insert begins, and the last forward slash is there to terminate the entire instruction. Here's a said command that will look through the phone list and change all occurrences of Smith to Smythe. Let's assume you spelled the name wrong and wish to update it. And as you see, when we run this command, it changes the one occurrence of the word Smith to Smythe. We did not put any address on this line, and so said searched for the word Smith in every line. We also could have run the command this way. 
where we told said to search for lines containing the word Smith and to update that with the word Smythe. We also can substitute with regular expressions. What I mean to say is that the first part of a said substitution instruction can contain regular expressions. The text you're putting in is always literal. For example, this said instruction says to substitute a 2 at the end of a line and put a 3 there instead. When I run this command, I've added the address 2 comma 4 so that only 2's at the end of a line in lines 2 through 4 get substituted. As you can see, the 2 at the end of the line in line 5 did not get changed. One interesting way to use the substitution command is to remove characters from a line by substituting nothing for them. Here's how you would remove the phone number from the line. The tab dot star dollar sign matches all the characters from a tab to the end of a line. Because you have two empty forward slashes, at the end of your substitution instruction, said takes out the phone number and puts nothing in its place. And as you see, you list names but no phone numbers. This command will get rid of first names because you're getting rid of everything from a space to the following tab. However, we have to be careful because if we take out the space, the first name, and the tab, then the phone number and the last name will be right next to one another because we haven't put anything back in to separate the two of them. It's best if you take out the space, the first name, and the tab that you put a tab back in, which is what this command does. The substitution instruction can also be used to insert text into a line. For example, let's put the word phone in front of the phone number. I can do this by taking a tab out of the line and putting a tab and the word phone in its place. This command does that. Because of the editing capabilities of the said command, you might want to edit a file and put the new version of the file back into the original. That is to say, you make a change in the phone list file and you want to put those changes back into that same file. You might think that this command line would do that. In this case, we're taking lines from the phone list file and then we're redirecting the output back into the phone list file. However, this will not work. And it won't work because of what we covered earlier in this course. Remember that shell meta characters are implemented before the process gets executed. The redirection into phone.list will occur before the said command gets a chance to read in from phone.list. The greater than will erase what's in the file before said even opens the file for input. As a result, this command line will erase the file instead of editing it. What you need to do instead is to use two commands. First, you use the set command to edit the file and you store the result in a temporary file. Next, you move the now edited temporary file over the old phone.list file, in essence, updating it to the new characters. A second instruction I find useful is the said delete line command, which is represented by a small d. Because you can issue global commands in said, Simply having a single argument of a lowercase d and passing this to said deletes every line in the file. You can delete all the lines that begin with a capital S using this command. These are two of said's many editing instructions. 
The textbook covers a third instruction and three said options. If you want to take a look at the other said editing instructions, take a look at the manual page for said in your documentation. In addition, check the manual for exercises I'd like you to work on so you get a better feel for how said works. Please do these exercises before moving on to the next section.